The following is a presentation of Learfield IMG College. It's time for St. Mary's Basketball on the Gales Radio Network. Inside to the corner for Dukas, his three, got it! Johnson blocks the shot! LJ is everywhere right now. Bowen's open, lets a three fly, it's good! Big shot for Kyle Bowen! Welcome to the University Credit Union pregame show. University Credit Union, the official credit union of St. Mary's College Athletics. Visit ucu.org to learn more. Live courtside, here's Alex Jensen. And from Moraga on this Wednesday night, welcome to University Credit Union Pavilion on the campus of St. Mary's College as the Gales, for the first time this season, must deal with bouncing back from a loss, coming back from an overtime setback against the Washington Huskies in Anaheim last week. Welcome to Moraga alongside Dave Lewis. I'm Alex Jensen. It's time for St. Mary's basketball as the Gales take on the New Mexico Lobos, who are one of just 18 unbeaten teams in the nation, Dave, and really a test for both teams. And we'll learn a lot about both for the Gales, their first time bouncing back for, from a loss, and for New Mexico, really their first high-quality opponent. I'm really concerned or curious about what New Mexico brings to the table. They've got some star power with guys like Jamal Mashburn, but their schedule, not great, so for them, easily their most difficult game of this early season. Meanwhile, for St. Mary's, the first bit of adversity after that great start. Not able to close against Washington, so we'll see how Randy Bennett's team responds. And really a big-time matchup in the post. For the Gales, Mitchell Saxon is averaging nearly a double-double, a career-high 19 points. In both of the Gales games at the Wooden against high major opponents, he has been on quite a roll. Yeah, he's so athletic in the middle, and he has such big shoes to fill in terms of taking the place of Matthias Toss, and he's a guy that can really defend the rim in terms of dealing with the pick and roll, but now offensively, he's got great ability to shoot with either hand around the rim. He's gonna have his hands full because Morris Udeze, the reigning Mountain West player of the week, is leading the conference in scoring nearly 20 points per game. Oh yeah, he's also shooting over 60% from the field. And the most valuable player of the Lobo Classic, he's a great transfer from Wichita State. He scored 10 points a game for the Shockers and has been a huge addition in the middle for these guys. In terms of style of play, Dave, it's really a contrast because New Mexico wants to go, they want to force turnovers, get out in transition. For the Gales, we know they want to play in the half court. Yeah, taking care of the basketball is a St. Mary's premium. So we'll look at the turnover stat. That'll be critical in terms of the Lobos trying to turn them over. They've got a great margin in terms of rebounding in this early season. So rebounding, handling the basketball, key stats tonight. And rebounding an area the Gales struggled with at the Wooden Legacy. Also holding on to the basketball, 16 turnovers against Washington. You do that against New Mexico, at least in the early going so far, a high-powered offense, 84 points per game, they'll make you pay. Well, you like to think that Washington game statistically was an aberration. They're outscoring from the bench the first time all year, a rebounded, shot at their worst so far this season, and all the turnovers this season worst, so a chance for Randy Bennett's team to respond in a big way. So a good non-conference matchup coming your way on this Wednesday. St. Mary's in New Mexico, one of three WCC Mountain West matchups on this Wednesday night, and as we mentioned, a good test for both clubs as the Gales are coming off their first loss this season, and for New Mexico, it's their best non-conference opponent to date. When we return, Mickey McConnell will join us for our pregame coaches show. That'll be followed by starting lineups in the tip from Moraga. And you're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. Show your school spirit and earn rewards as the official credit union of St. Mary's College, University Credit Union offers a custom-designed rewards credit card for the Gale family. Enjoy no annual fee while earning unlimited points, making the UCU St. Mary's credit card the perfect card to use for everyday use. Plus, when you open a UCU checking account, you'll show even more Gale pride with the St. Mary's College debit card. Visit ucu.org to learn more and apply today. Federally insured by NCUA. Walnut Creek offers Gales fans quick and easy access to the excitement of a vibrant city and the charm of hometown California, all in one central location. Only seven miles from campus, Walnut Creek Hotels are the official lodging partners for St. Mary's. In a sunny, upscale and comfortable environment at the base of Mount Diablo, Walnut Creek brings together an eclectic collection of culture, award-winning shopping, hotels, sports facilities, and cuisine to make you smile at every turn. Go to visitwalnutcreek.org to explore your next adventure. My name's Tony Tornado. I write and star in my own shows and movies. My crew knows that I dream of Hollywood. They also know that I love Mountain Dew. But there's so much more they don't know. Sometimes at night, I look up at the stars and think, I know why Mountain Dew's so crucial to my existence. But does anybody else? 
Tucci dues the green gold circulating through my veins. It makes Tony Tornado believe that he can do anything. So now you know my secret. But there's so much more you don't know. Do the do. This is St. Mary's Basketball on the Gales Radio Network. With tip-off just minutes away, time to get the pregame thoughts of associate head coach Mickey McConnell. With coach, here's Alex Jensen. We continue our countdown to tip-off on this Wednesday night for Moraga as the Gales embark on a big week and a couple of games first here on Wednesday, then on Saturday. But starting with tonight's game against New Mexico, it's time for our pregame coaches show with associate head coach Mickey McConnell. All right, Mick, 6-1 and one coming into play today. You've, you've had a, a you know, good stretch of games to evaluate your team. You know, what are some things that your club has been doing well through the first seven games of the season? Yeah, I think, you know, defensively we've been in a pretty good spot. I thought we'd, we've done a pretty nice job um, in almost every game. Uh, Washington, you know, we didn't weren't as good defensively. Um, some of it was the O boards, but... Um, we've, we've, our numbers are good there. So that, that'd be one positive for us. And up until this past weekend, we'd, we'd done a nice job of taking care of the ball and, um, getting good shots and playing, playing pretty right on offense. So, you know, those defensively is what we've kind of hung our hat on. I think offensively we, we can keep developing there. Obviously we, we struggled to shoot the ball a little bit this past two games, but prior to that, you know, we, I would have said that was one of our strengths coming in is we, we shot the ball really well. So uh, we'll have to get back on track there. And, um, but I think overall, you know, as a team, those, those senior guys are, are doing a great job leading. Um, our young guys are coming along. Um, and I think we just got to keep hanging our hat on the defensive end and trying to shut teams out and lock them up and um, limit their easy buckets. At least to this point in the season, according to Ken Palm, you are playing at a bit of a faster tempo so far this year. Now it's tough to go anywhere but up from where you were a year ago but what do you attribute that to is it something you've noticed um a little bit I think just some personnel change maybe I you know Aiden and the Gooses um play a little faster they push they get out and transition a little more um obviously last year with Kuzi we we're more methodical and you know it's why we were really good down the stretch as he made such great decisions late in the season and we played out of the post a lot so I think those guards really are a big difference and then obviously Logan's um, Logan's really come on as a playmaker and um, gets us a good transition on defense and I think part of it is we force a lot of turnovers so forcing turnovers can lead to you know getting into faster offensive possessions which which has helped so um, it, it was a cognizant effort a little bit in the off season to, to play a little faster um, but at the same time, try to try to get the same great looks and get the ball where we want. Going back to that game against Washington, and we haven't got a chance to, to talk about it here besides your, your post-game interview right after the game. So you've had a chance to look at the tape. There are several factors that worked against you in that game. We talked about the shooting, uh, the turnovers, and you know, yet your, your guys still had a chance to kind of close that thing out uh, you know, with 90 seconds left. That's the bright side, obviously, the downside. We know what that is. But after getting a chance to look at that tape, what, what do you feel like your guys could have done better against maybe a little bit of a, uh, an unorthodox team, and, and especially the way they guard you in Washington? Yeah, I mean, I think after watching just the first half alone, um, we could have been better in the zone. I think we were a little bit uh, not um, out of sorts, but we, we didn't get the ball where we needed to get it, you know, and, and then we made some adjustments at halftime. In the second half, we scored 36. So I think the number one thing is we, we weren't great against the zone in the first half. Um, we, we could have gotten some easier looks. And then the obvious one, I mean, some of it comes down to you got to make some shots. They gave us some some good looks, and uh, we got some great shots that our guys have, have been knocking down. So it just was one of those nights where they weren't falling. And but I thought the second half uh, we did a much better job of you know getting the ball inside, getting it through the middle, getting it into sacks, and we got layups. We we hit some threes, but um, yeah, still you know as poorly as we we felt we played, we had a we had a chance up five, I think, with a minute forty to go. So. Um, we put ourselves in a good spot to win, and, and uh, we just we need to make those plays down the stretch. We got to you know we got to be able to close out a game up five in the second half with a minute forty. 
we've talked about your schedule, you know, several times leading up to the season. But, you know, you come off one opportunity and, and a split in Southern California. Now another opportunity comes knocking at your door in a top 100 team tonight. And then obviously the number one team in the country coming up this weekend. You know, without taking any specific games into consideration, you know, how nice is it of a luxury for you guys to know that, hey, even if we're not able to capitalize here, we have several more opportunities by the time we get to conference play to improve against good teams. Yeah, I mean, we're going to be we're going to be tested quite a bit coming up. And I think it's it's what you need. It's what you need for your program. It's what you need for your guys to see where you're at um, to play some of these teams. Uh, you know, I feel like every team we've talked about, we've said they're they're all they're old, like um, but everyone's in college basketball has gotten old and have talent and, you know, our, our schedule coming up is a, a bit of a gauntlet but I think it's a, it's great for our guys and it's what you want to come to St. Mary's for it's what we've been trying to push for is to get in games like this so um, I know as a staff we're just taking it day by day and, and game by game and we'll worry about New Mexico and then figure out who we're playing after that but it is it is an exciting stretch for us. Speaking of New Mexico, the Lobos are undefeated. They are 6-0 and oh, and really kind of a juxtaposition in styles, Mick. I mean, they really want to pressure the basketball, get out and run. They average 84 points per game. What do you see when you look at this team? Yeah, they're really, really good in transition. They create a lot of uh, transition off turnovers. I think teams averaging like 15 or more turnovers a game, which is a, a high number. So they're aggressive on the ball. Um, Jalen House is very disruptive on the half court defense, whether it's on the ball or off the ball. He's he gets steals, and I mean we've watched enough uh, film now to to know that the stats might be wrong. He's I mean in some of those games it seems like he's getting five and six uh, steals and. Um, he leads their, their transition. They have good scoring and with him and Mashburn. And then they have a good post presence in, in Udizi. So um, they're pretty balanced there. They play inside, out. They don't shoot a ton of threes, but they play off their guards and then they play off their bigs. So it's, uh, yeah, stylistically, they're, they run on, a, on their misses and, and steals and turnovers. But in the half court, if we, if we score, they're, they're usually going to walk it up, run a set, get into what they want. So um, we'll have to just be focused on, you know, keep them out of transition early. Again, another opportunity for the Gales, and it's time now for our keys to the game, which are brought to you by Bay Alarm. With a range of home and business security options, Bay Alarm can protect it all with just one call. A quick home game before back out on the road. Mickey, St. Mary's, New Mexico, the floor is yours. Yeah, I think coming off this, you know, the trip down south, we, we really need to take care of the ball. Um, I think we had 16 turnovers in our last one, and we're playing against a team that forces 15 a night. So, We'll have to be really, really focused on taking care of the ball, getting great shots. You can get them in close out. So start there and, and do a great job taking care of it and then keep them out of transition. They, they thrive on transition. Um, they get layups, they get it in the post, they get threes. So um, we'll have to limit their transition, get back, build walls and uh, keep them, keep them out of, from getting easy buckets. And then uh, in the half court, we'll have to guard their sets. They, they put the ball inside a lot more than any team we've played, so our, our bigs will have to be really locked in to keeping them out of the high lows and um, just keeping the ball out of the post and then uh, get back on track rebounding. You know, we were, I think we were plus 10 going into this the past weekend, and then uh, we slipped a little bit there. So we'll have to get back on track there and, and try to smash them on the boards. All right, Mick, there you have it. Appreciate your time. We'll talk to you afterwards. Good luck tonight. Thanks. Sounds good. All right, that's Mickey McConnell with our pregame coaches show. Starting lineups and tip off coming up next from Moraga. Bay Alarm is proud to sponsor the St. Mary's Gales. How good is your defense? When it comes to protecting your home or business, Bay Alarm has been bringing the best for over 75 years. With security camera and fire alarm systems designed to fit your specific needs, expertly installed and professionally monitored 24-7. Ready to up your security game? Go to BayAlarm.com and let our team of security experts get you protected today. Go Gales. Out here, we charge into the heartland with Mountain Dew. Out here, there's no rush hour, just the rush of flying wide open on glassy water at 5 a.m. with your first dew in hand. And there's no spin class, just bright green spinner bait that ironically matches your second dew. Out here, we don't just play big buck hunt, we hunt actual big bucks. And out here, the best road is off-road, and the color of your truck is mud. Out here, it's dew. 
Since 1990, the team at Common Interest Management has been privileged to serve boards of directors and community homeowners of many of the Bay Area's most prestigious communities. Whether working with a newly established community in the earliest stages of development or a more mature community, our experienced managers consult with the board to share best practices in all areas of community management. Common Interest tailors its services for communities of all sizes. If you are currently evaluating a new management company, please visit us at commoninterest.com. You're listening to St. Mary's Basketball on the Gales Radio Network. It's time for St. Mary's Basketball. Rises up, floats it up, and in, and one. Gets in the paint right to the rim. Oh, man, he throws it down. Gales Basketball is brought to you by Pepsi. Delicious, refreshing Pepsi by Under Armour. We'll keep building the gear, you'll keep getting better. And by Diablo Valley Insurance, owned and run by Gales. Go to DiabloValleyInsurance.com today to request a quote. James at home with the right hand! Oh my! This place has been electric tonight. It's time.
in time now for our starting lineups for this Wednesday night game. A quick game here back in Moraga for St. Mary's before heading back out on the road. And boy, a big game coming up on the over the weekend on Saturday in Fort Worth to take on the new number one team in the country, the Houston Cougars. But this is a big one tonight, of course, with New Mexico, one of 18 unbeaten teams remaining in the country. But of course, the uh, highest rated team in Ken Palm, the Lobos have taken on SMU at 144, which was a road victory. First for the Lobos, again under Richard Patino in his second season, 19 and 19 overall. The Lobos have not been to the NCAA tournament or a postseason in nine seasons since the 2013-14 year when they earned a seven seed. And for the Lobos, it's a uh, backcourt day with a pretty good lineage in Jalen House, the son of Eddie House. Of course, the all-time leading scorer at Arizona State had a long NBA career. And Jamal Mashburn Jr., they're a high-scoring duo, maybe a bit undersized, but they're both averaging 17 points per game. Yeah, they've really retooled this roster with transfers, and those two in particular, big-time scorers. Of course, Eddie House, a Hayward legend, lit up Cal. I think he scored 62 in a game at Haas. And, of course, Jamal Mashburn Jr., the son of one of the all-time great Kentucky players. Now, these starting lineups brought to you by University Credit Union, the official credit union of St. Mary's College. Visit ucu.org to join today. Again, for the Lobos, it's House and Mashburn in the backcourt. Javante Johnson, 6'6", junior out of Colorado Springs, starts at the three position, and it's a brand-new frontcourt as well. Transfer f Transfers from Kansas City and the 6'8", senior Josiah Alec, and Morris Udezi, the uh, Mountain West Conference Player of the Week, a career-high 33 points to go along with 14 rebounds in the Lobos' last game against Northern Colorado. 6'8", a grad transfer from Wichita State. Now for the Gales, it's 6-1. Randy Bennett in his 22nd year, 486 and 200. It'll be Augustus Marshallonis and Logan Johnson in the backcourt with Alex Dukas at the three, Kyle Bowen at the four, and Mitchell Saxon averaging again nearly a double-double. 15 points, nearly nine rebounds a game starting in the middle. The eighth consecutive game the Gales have sent this starting five to the floor. Officials tonight, Fern Harris, Randy McCall, Eric Curry, he's got the basketball. Gales in the white with the red numerals, and New Mexico in the traditional cherry and silver. And the Lobos will begin with the basketball first, and a good crowd on this Wednesday for the first matchup between these two teams all time in Moraga. Johnson will take a turn on Jamal Mashburn Jr. first. Here's House trying to enter the post to Alec. Knocked away, loose ball on the floor. And the first possession is a timeout called by Mitchell Saxon. So it'll be a turnover on New Mexico. And a big point of emphasis during shoot-around today, Dave, was those entry po passes into the post. And right there, it was Jalen House getting to the nail and looking for Alec rolling. Knocked away by Saxon. Good read by the big fella. And this is a team that doesn't turn over much, about 10 per game. So you get one of the first possession. That's something with the Gales want. Of course, Randy Bennett has hung his hat on the defensive end of the court. New Mexico comes in with a rating in Ken Palm of 91. That is 204 spots higher than they finished two years ago. So they have seen the third highest uptick in the nation in Ken Palm over that span under Richard Patino, behind only Portland and Towson. What a job Portland has done with Shantae Leggins. That's a program really on the rise. Yeah, they've been incredible. And their performance at the Phil Knight Legacy Tournament this weekend, nearly taking down the number one team in the country at the time, and a win over Villanova. And had Michigan State sweating down the stretch. First possession for St. Mary's just underway from Moraga. Post touch right away for Saxon. This is the matchup to watch Saxon and Udezi. Here's Saxon again, 10 to shoot. Gets the middle with the right hand hook. Came up short. Everything but the finish playing with a lot of confidence. And here come the Lobos on the run. This is something to watch. They really want to get out and run, Dave. Their tempo rating in Ken Palm is 44th. As you heard from Mickey McConnell in our pregame show, off of makes, they were really walking up and getting to the half court. On misses or live ball turnovers, they want to run. Javante Johnson misfires on a three. Marshallonis, Johnson, Dukas, Bowen, and Saxon to start the game for the Gales. Saxon with a missed jump hook on the first possession. Here's Marshallonis. New Mexico, they will take a lot of chances on defense, particularly Jalen House. Nice move by Marshallonis. Gets the Gales on the board to start the game. Brought that back with the left hand. Very tough angle near the baseline. So 2-0 St. Mary's. 
Jalen House, the transfer from Arizona State at point guard for the Cherry and Silver. Pick to finish fifth in the preseason Mountain West Bowl. Jamal Mashburn Jr. can really score, and good defense there by Johnson. Force Mashburn to get it up faster than he wanted. Marshallonis open straight away, offline. Not shooting it well from three, and not a lot of confidence from beyond the arc. Marshallonis on the year now just two for 13 from three. Both makes were in the same game against uh, Hofstra when he had a career high 14 points. Here's Mashburn. Loves that mid range pull up. Bowen clears the board. 2 0 St. Mary's, 17 and a half minutes to play in the first half. Gales one of three, New Mexico. 0 for their first three tries. Saxon one on one with Udeze. Left hand this time for the baseline. Boy, what a tough shot. Spinning middle, then going back to the baseline with a left hand. First four of the ball game to St. Mary's. And the Mexico team that kind of plays with uh, two bigs at all times, Dave. Good hands by Saxon, knocking away from Udeze. Gales with a steal. Johnson. Saxon, they've got a mismatch here, and two Lobos downstairs. Marshall Lonis is open. Misfires on a three straight away. Alec chases down the board. Major challenge for New Mexico. They've got the one road win at SMU, but the level of competition rising tonight. House looking for space. Can't find the range off glass. Dukas with a run out, hits Johnson soaring to the rim. Missed the lay-in. Alec was there to change the shot. The six wins for the Lobos, Southern Utah, South Alabama. Alec high arcing three. Heel of the rim miss. He is now one for 10 from deep this year. So Southern Utah, South Alabama, as you mentioned, at SMU. And then their own Lobo Classic, Jacksonville State, North Dakota State, and Northern Colorado, and Mitchell Saxon. We'll get to the line just about four minutes into the ball game. And New Mexico shot it very well in their own tournament, but 0 for 5 to start the game tonight. So Saxon will go to the line, fresh off a all-tournament nod at the Paycom Wooden Legacy when he averaged 19 points and 6.5 and rebounds per game. He's really put up good numbers so far. His first free throw on the way, and it's good. And this part of his game, Dave, has taken a major step forward. He was under 60% from the line a year ago. So far this year, now 14 of 19. And last year, three points, two rebounds a game. Now a major factor in this offense. Comes up short on the second free throw. He does have three of the Gales' first five points. New Mexico yet to score. Lobos are averaging 84 points per game and shooting on the year 50% from the field. As they've only played one game away from the famous pit. Looking for a post touch for Alec. He's being defended by Bowen. Udeze. Now House, the pick and roll with the big man. And the reigning Mountain West Pl Conference Player of the Week gets it to go from the box. Clear aside, go with the two-man game and go with your athletic big to get their first points. Morris Udeze, 6'8", 240, a grad transfer, again, from Wichita State, native of Houston. Dukas left open, hits a three. Boy, running away from a shooter, a very poor decision by House defensively, and he knows it. Dukas really struggled from the line, and the Gales lost to Washington on Thanksgiving. He went one of seven against that trademark Husky zone. Udeze, one-on-one -on -one with Saxon, couldn't finish. Wanted a foul, now the Gales are gonna have numbers. Udeze behind the play. Marshallonis to Johnson for three, no. And Udeze with the board for the Lobos. And here they come, they want to run, and Mashburn runs into Marshallonis in the open floor. And a foul on Augustus will take us to a timeout on the floor here in Moraga. 14.49 to play in our opening half. St. Mary's with an 8-2 lead over New Mexico. The Lobos are just one of seven from the field. And we'll step aside. You're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield.
St. Mary's with an early 8-2 lead over New Mexico. After the first media timeout, 14.49 to go in the opening half, Dave. And early on, we've said this before, the Gales' defense is setting the tone. And looking through the notes produced brilliantly again by, of course, uh, Mr. Brownfield. First team to 60 wins. Matchup of tempo. Yeah. St. Mary's trying to hold this high-octane offense down and so far doing a good job. Gales, on the other hand, three of eight from the field. Saxon and Dukas each with three points. It'll be Lobo basketball on the far side after Marshall Lonis picked up his first personal out of the timeout. Starting five on the floor for both clubs still as Mashburn is off a handoff. Chased by Johnson. This will be another good matchup and a travel called on Mashburn as he falls over with the dribble. Third Lobo turnover. Already 30% of the way to their total per game this season. So the Gales leading by six with the basketball. Duke has hit one three already. This time they'll go inside to Saxon. Saxon does have a size advantage on Udeze. He'll go one on one. Missed the hook, gets his own board, goes back up, sticks it in, Woo. and the foul. Alex, a very concerted effort in their four out and one in to get Saxon some early touches. Well, he has really gotten to his spots against Udeze, who comes off now for the seven-footer out of Sweden, Sebastian Forsling. It's only Forsling only averaging five minutes per game. So Udeze comes off after committing the personal. His second big foul in today's game. And Saxon completes the three-point play. Six early for the Gale big man. They have a 10-2 lead. Or an 11-2 lead, pardon me. So Forsling, the seven-footer in there. House, one-on-one -on -one with Marshallonis, tough shot. Everything being created off the bounce so far for New Mexico. It's a team that does not take a lot of threes. Pick and roll, and Saxon is fouled by Forsling on the catch. They're averaging, they've in fact, in their last win against Northern Colorado, a game in which they scored 98 points. The Lobos attempted just nine threes. As Aiden Mahaney checks in and Marshall Lonis comes off. One of the numbers that jumps out for them in the early season, averaging 17 assists per game. Here comes the freshman Donovan Dent out of uh, Riverside, California, the powerhouse Centennial High School. Mr. Basketball award to uh, Donovan Dent as a high school senior. Gales with a nine-point lead. Saxon wants to go to work on Forsling. Here comes the double now. Saxon, deep position, blocked from behind by House. Out of bounds, it will stay with St. Mary's. Well, you mentioned the assists for New Mexico, Dave. The St. Mary's, on the other hand, defensively, is seventh in the country in assist rate defense. Barrett comes on for Dukas. So, of opponents' baskets, just 35.7% come off assists. They make you earn it. Risky pass. House the deflection in his first deal. He's had as many as six in a game this year. Transition not there. Ball loose. Gales take it back. Fourth Lobo turnover. That one caused by Logan Johnson. New Mexico one of eight with four giveaways. Johnson on the freshman dent. Finds Mahaney right side. Well contested three by House. 11 to St. Mary's. Mashburn's been quiet early. Looking for a shot here. Blocked at the rim by Saxon. Mahaney, throw ahead for LJ. One on one with House to the rim. This time he makes it count. Did a great job of shielding the defender with his body, leading with that right shoulder. 13-2 St. Mary's. They've scored the game's last eight points. The Lobos are one of nine. And Patino did not even look for a potential timeout there. Mashburn off balance. Bear with the rebound. I think his team needs one now. Mashburn preseason all Mountain West. Johnson looked through traffic for Saxon and Mitchell wasn't, wasn't looking for the pass. That's the second Gale turnover. 
Here comes K.J. Jenkins, 6'2 redshirt senior out of Atlanta. He replaces Jalen House. 13-2. Dent, the freshman, on fellow freshman Mahaney, brought the ball low, knocked away. Another St. Mary's steal. They just make you work so hard for it, Alex. It's the fourth Gale steal already. Hasn't been a whole lot of opportunities either for New Mexico in transition yet. Johnson tried the right hand. Mahaney opened from the corner, blocked by Dent. And a foul on Mahaney on the loose ball. Boy, Dent made up a lot of ground in a hurry there. Mahaney fouls his fellow freshman. Timeout on the floor, 13-2 St. Mary's lead with 11.44 to play in the opening half. We'll step aside for Moraga, back with more after this. Gales with a hot start, leading the Lobos by 11. You're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. Fourth Moore Tap Room and Grill in Orendo's Theater Square is now your official away game watch party location for St. Mary's Athletics. Enjoy apps, salads, burgers, or one of their signature handcrafted wood-fired pizzas on the patio with the giant fire pit. Plus, they offer discounts for all St. Mary's students, coaches, faculty, and alumni. Catch every game on one of their 10 big screen TVs or enjoy live music Thursday through Saturday evenings from 6.30 to 10.30. You can even have them cater your next event. For more information, visit thefourthboard.com or call 925-254-1183. Go Gales! Walnut Creek offers Gales fans quick and easy access to the excitement of a vibrant city and the charm of hometown California, all in one central location. Only seven miles from campus, Walnut Creek Hotels are the official lodging partners for St. Mary's. In a sunny, upscale, and comfortable environment at the base of Mount Diablo, Walnut Creek brings together an eclectic collection of culture, award-winning shopping, hotels, sports facilities, and cuisine to make you smile at every turn. Go to visitwalnutcreek.org to explore your next adventure. My name's Tony Tornado. I write and star in my own shows and movies. My crew knows that I dream of Hollywood. They also know that I love Mountain Dew. But there's so much more they don't know. Sometimes at night, I look up at the stars and think, I know why Mountain Dew's so crucial to my existence. But does anybody else? See, Dew's the green gold circulating through my veins. It makes Tony Tornado believe that he can do anything. So now you know my secret. But there's so much more you don't know. Do the do. This is Mitchell Saxon. More Gales basketball is on the way. 11 points, St. Mary's lead, 13 to 2. 11.44 to play until halftime. Alongside Dave Lewis, I'm Alex Jensen. Glad you could join us on this Wednesday night. And Dave, turnovers have been a big theme early for the Gale defense. You know, 5 to 2, Gales with the edge there. New Mexico surprisingly unable to handle it early on. Dent controlling point for the Lobos. Entry pass to Alec. He's going to work on Bowen. Alec, the transfer out of Kansas City. Good defense by KB. Alec, though, good footwork to get to the left hand and bank it in. Good footwork and even better hair with that finish with the left hand, too. I mean, we're operating the post like that. A little bit of Joachim Noah. Just need to see a two-handed jumper now. Mahaney, Johnson, Barrett, Bowen, and Saxon. Saxon, low left. Kick out to Barrett, catch and shoot three on the way, skips off the rim. Dent with the rebound, looking to push. Gales get back on defense. Here's Mashburn. And an overthrow, Forsling looking for Alec on the post again. Sixth turnover on New Mexico. Who are you going to? And Mahaney will walk it ahead. Gales, they really struggled from three against Washington. They came into that game over 42% from deep, which is 6 of 29. As Mahaney looked for Saxon on the roll. And the Gales turn it over tonight so far, just one of seven. Marshall Lonis will check back in at the next stoppage. Gales, however, are four of eight inside the arc. Eight of their 13 points have come in the paint. Here's Dent. Gales converge. Another turnover. As Bowen got a hand in there, and Barrett will get credit for the steal. Johnson working that pick and roll. Pick out. Mahaney three straight away. A foul. He'll go to the line for three shots as K.J. Jenkins crowded him landing from the jump shot. It's amazing watching 
Mahaney play after missing a couple of shots. A lot of guys would maybe back off, pass the ball around, or maybe dribble, but he has so much confidence in his game that the next shot will fall. He is certainly not afraid. And you know, for a freshman, Dave, I mean, that's kind of the thing you can't teach, right? The poise, the confidence, and your own ability. I mean, he went three for 13 from deep against Washington on Thanksgiving. And 0 for 2, to your point, not a, so far tonight, not afraid to take the deep one and earned a trip to the line where he split the first two. The telecast in the Vanderbilt game when he made the shot from midcourt, they pretty much gave him the WCC freshman of the year with that one make. Dukas checks back in for Barrett. Mahaney's third on the way and good. And Marshall Lonis will return. So Mahaney goes two for three at the stripe. 15 to four, the Gale lead. New Mexico, Dent, Mashburn, Jenkins, Alec, and Forsling. Lobos are two for 11. Mashburn has not scored yet. Gales double teamed him on the drive there. Has to kick out to Jenkins, 13 to shoot. Jenkins blocked from behind by Dukas, but a foul called as Dukas got his feet tangled up with Jenkins. And we will have Lobo free throws with 9.49 to play. That was a really good defensive possession, Alex, because New Mexico had nothing going and was forced again to go late clock trying to make something happen off the bounce. K.J. Jenkins to the line. First free throw is good. House will return for the Lobos. Mashburn will get his first rest. Forsling will come off for uh, Richard Patino and Barima Sex, 6'11", sophomore out of Senegal, will get his first action. Second free throw upcoming for K.J. Jenkins. He gets them both. Four starts a year ago for Jenkins. Almost 10 points a game. Marshall Lonis will advance to the front court for St. Mary's, wearing the white and leading by nine. Here's Dukas. He's got a size mismatch here, being guarded by the 6'2", Jenkins. 6'7", Dukas backing down and missed the bunny. Here comes House, he wants to push. Hales back on defense. That'll be a constant kind of tug of war between these two teams as New Mexico really wants to push that tempo, but the Gales over the years, Dave, have been so good in transition defense. Foul on the entry pass by Bowen. This has been a terrific first half defensively. Not just the statistics, which just jump out two for 11, but if, when you watch the game, how difficult St. Mary's is making it for New Mexico to get into their offense. Baseline out of bounds for the Lobos. Dent to send it in. That was the first foul on Bowen, fourth team foul on St. Mary's. The Gales are just five for 16, but leading by nine early. Tough shot there as Jenkins scoops it in over the outstretched hands of Dukas. Sometimes you just have to tip your cap. Better offense beating very good defense. St. Mary's on top by seven. Trying to get Saxon a touch here, guarded by the 6'8", Josiah Alec. Two-man game here with Johnson. Johnson will take the three. And Dent will collect the rebound. Gales now without a field goal over the last four minutes. Jenkins shook Dukas, little runner doesn't go. House on the reload for three. Big time score, and a guy that can really get it going quickly for the Lobos. That was Alec tapping out the offensive rebound of the shooter who hit the three. Seven nothing run for New Mexico. Looking for Saxon, instead Johnson will drive, get to the right hand, hook, pinballs out. That was halfway down, Alec with the board for the Lobos. Gales are five of 18 defense, to start the game. Sec on Bowen, that's 6-11 on 6-8, and an offensive foul. So Sec a little out of control, and Bowen has done that a time or two in his day. The senior draws the charge, another New Mexico turnover, but Dave, the Lobos are hanging around despite starting the game 4-14. Reason being because St. Mary's unable to connect when the Lobos collapse in the post. St. Mary's only one of eight from three to start the game. Timing on the floor here in Moraga, 7.50 to go until halftime. It's a 15-11 St. Mary's lead. We'll step aside. You're listening to St. Mary's basketball from Learfield. 
Diablo Valley Insurance Agency is a full-service independent insurance brokerage located in Walnut Creek. Founded in 1956, our agency has been providing insurance services to clients throughout Northern California and the Western United States for over 50 years. Our team of insurance professionals will take the time to understand your needs, whether personal or related to your business, and provide the best products and services for you. Go to DiabloValleyInsurance.com today to request a quote. Diablo Valley Insurance Agency, local, independent, trusted. Panini's Ristorante has been delivering quality food and beverages to the Moraga area for years and is a proud hometown partner of St. Mary's College Athletics. Casual dining with the whole family or an adult night out, they have you covered. Visit them at 1375 Moraga Way for a wonderful experience. Panini's Ristorante. Since 1990, the team at Common Interest Management has been privileged to serve boards of directors and community homeowners of many of the Bay Area's most prestigious communities. Whether working with a newly established community in the earliest stages of development or a more mature community, our experienced managers consult with the board to share best practices in all areas of community management. Common Interest tailors its services for communities of all sizes. If you are currently evaluating a new management company, please visit us at commoninterest.com. This is St. Mary's Basketball on the Gales Radio Network. You can get the latest on St. Mary's Athletics by checking out smcgales.com. Get up to date scores, video highlights, and stories about the Gales all in one place. If you're looking for more, find the Gales on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All those handles at smcgales. Alongside Dave Lewis, I'm Alex Jensen. The Gales have not scored in over two minutes now. And meanwhile, New Mexico has notched seven in a row. Dave, we've got a ball game again here in the first half. Easily the biggest test for the Lobos so far this year and have not folded early when they had a chance to get blown out. Joshua Jefferson has checked in at the five, the freshman for St. Mary's. Had a nice first half against Washington, trying to break that zone, backing down on Alec, double team. Here's Johnson, good pass to JJ. Shot fake goes up, can't finish, but the foul and Joshua Jefferson will get the line with 7.28 to play in the first half. This, this is a guy that he just, he knows how to play. It just seems like an easy guy to play with. You can see double teamed as a freshman on the post, not panic, get it outside to Johnson, and then move well without the ball to become available in the middle of the key. When you look at Coach Bennett's recruiting, not only are these players good, but they have come from winning programs. Guys have been very successful. Jefferson winning a state title in Las Vegas. Of course, Howell, a big time player in San Diego. Section championship winner, of course, Mahaney winning right down the street at Camp Alindo. Mashburn and Javante Johnson return. Second on the way from Jefferson. That rims out. Boy, the Gales have really struggled over their last three games at the free throw line. Came into play today under 64% from the stripe. They are four of eight tonight and five of 18 from the field. Mashburn guarded by Johnson. Here's Alec. Jefferson, the freshman on the senior. Alec to the rim, can't finish. And the rebound is collected by Marshallonis. Gales need a bucket here. A little side pick and roll here with Jefferson and Marshallonis. Augustus nearly overshot Johnson. LJ to the rim. Wow, it looked like he was going to try to reverse it, come out the other side, but so strong finishing from that left side of the rim. St. Mary's lead back to a half dozen. Johnson's second bucket. He's got four points. Mashburn chased by LJ. Three white jerseys converge, kick out to House. That's a deep three, and a foul on the rebound is going to go on Bowen. That's his second. Trying to ward off Alec for the rebound. Mitchell Saxon returns, as does Aiden Mahaney. Second foul for KB, he'll check off. Udeze has been on the bench for most of the, much, most of the first half for the Lobos with two fouls. That was Bowen's second, the 15th foul on the Gales. Mashburn stripped, good hands by Saxon. Ninth Lobo turnover. And here's a Gale turnover, the second steal for House in the open floor. Well, he is fun to watch despite the, the very slow start for New Mexico. Five for 17 from the floor. 
only down by four. That's part of the book on House is he will take a lot of chances defensively, but oftentimes those chances pay off. Mahaney looking for the lob to Saxon. Saxon wasn't looking for it, and it's out of bounds. Last touch by Saxon. House, I don't think he, I think he thought that was deflected. I think Mahaney was looking for the lob to Saxon. House would have let that go, it would have been Lobo ball anyway. Saxon thought that ball was going up with Mahaney jump shot. Yale lead once 11, now four. Both teams under 32% from the field. Mashburn, step back. He has started 0 of 5. Bad pass, Alex steps in the passing lane, and then a steal back the other way. Not a cleanly played first half at all. Not at all, and now they're gonna reset the shot clock here as they're gonna say Alec had possession. Well, between these two teams, 16 total turnovers. Forsling will return as Alec comes off. Lobos do average seven and a half steals per game. The live ball turnover, so they put 30 back on the clock, thanks to Eric Curry. Trying to get Saxon a post touch now. He's got it low right. They clear out the side for him. Saxon. Foul called on Forsling, defending the post. Not getting much going offensively in the last few minutes for St. Mary's, so Saxon taking it upon himself with that post touch, trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. They have just one field goal, Dave, over the last eight minutes. That was the Johnson driving layup along the left baseline. During that stretch, they've also gone three of five from the line. Saxon has a one and one here, and the first is up and good. And would make Randy Bennett unhappy with three turnovers in the last 144. He's coming off a game against Washington when the Gales had 16 turnovers. Huskies turn those into 21 points. Saxon splits the free throws. Jefferson fights for the board and gets the Gales a fresh 20 on the shot clock. Right back to Saxon. Help comes, Saxon splits the double team. Haney shuffled the pivot foot. Seventh Gale turnover. Aiden was doing his best trying to keep in bounds and disagreeing with that call. Jenkins off and they will bring Dent back in and put Dent on the ball. 440 to play. Dent. Another deflection, another Gale steal. And you can see House. And he is constantly hunting the basketball. Dukas for three. Offline. And House with the rebound. Here he comes in the open floor. Bumped by Mahaney. This will be a foul on the floor. Called on Aiden Mahaney. That'll be team foul number six, the second on Mahaney. And how about Alex, a team that averages 84 per game on the year, held a 13 so far. There's no doubt this has been played at a St. Mary's pace. And also a St. Mary's score, to your point. Lobos are already almost to their season high in turnovers. That was 13 against Northern Colorado. They've got 11 so far tonight. Here's Mashburn. House for House, chased by Marshallonis back into the game. And another foul is going to be called as Marshallonis was defending the drive. House, he's trying to say, House had my arm, but that will put New Mexico now in the bonus. And House will go to the line for a one and one with 4.18 to go in the opening half. Bowen returns and Jefferson off. Maybe you have to be a little bit older to appreciate how great Eddie House was as a player at Arizona State, of course, had a long career in the NBA. Won a championship playing with Paul Pierce and the Celtics in 2008. Jalen House, he began his career at his dad's alma mater. Was on the uh, Sun Devils Club when the Gales it took him to the woodshed in Phoenix. A 95-56 to St. Mary's victory. Jordan Ford with 34 points in that game. Yeah, lead down to three. 
Marshallonis, they want to post up Dukas here. Defended by the smaller match, but it's 6-7 on 6-2. Here comes help, swiped away, another St. Mary's turnover. Eighth Gale giveaway. Luke Barrett back into the game. Entry pass, Alec deep on Saxon. One point game. They tell you to do your work early defensively and Alec got too low once he got the ball. He was pretty much under the rim. This was a 13 to four St. Mary's lead. The Gale offense has just completely gone away. Dukas double teamed a foul is gonna be called on House playing the basketball. And that will take us to a timeout on the floor. Well, 19 total turnovers between these two clubs. Neither team is shooting better than 32%. It's a one point St. Mary's lead at the final media of the first half. 335 to play until halftime. St. Mary's leads New Mexico 18 to 17. We'll step aside and listen to Gales basketball from Learfield. Out here, we charge into the heartland with Mountain Dew. Out here, there's no rush hour, just the rush of flying wide open on glassy water at 5 a.m. with your first dew in hand. And there's no spin class, just bright green spinner bait that ironically matches your second dew. Out here, we don't just play big buck hunt, we hunt actual big bucks. And out here, the best road is off-road, and the color of your truck is mud. Out here, it's dew. Bay Alarm is proud to sponsor the St. Mary's Gales. How good is your defense? When it comes to protecting your home or business, Bay Alarm has been bringing the best for over 75 years. With security camera and fire alarm systems designed to fit your specific needs, expertly installed and professionally monitored 24-7. Ready to up your security game? Go to BayAlarm.com and let our team of security experts get you protected today. Go Gales! Walnut Creek offers Gales fans quick and easy access to the excitement of a vibrant city and the charm of hometown California, all in one central location. Only seven miles from campus, Walnut Creek Hotels are the official lodging partners for St. Mary's. In a sunny, upscale and comfortable environment at the base of Mount Diablo, Walnut Creek brings together an eclectic collection of culture, award-winning shopping, hotels, sports facilities, and cuisine to make you smile at every turn. Go to visitwalnutcreek.org to explore your next adventure. This is Augustus Marshallonis, and you're listening to Gales Basketball. 3.35 to play in the opening half. It's a one-point St. Mary's lead, 18 to 17. And offensively, this has been atrocious. Bit of a slog. <laughs> yeah. You were trying to look for the right word, and I just wanted to cut through and you know, weed through the chaff and just get right to it. Not a beautiful offensive game. Alex Dukas will have one and one free throws here. There have been 19 total turnovers and five assists tonight. So Dukas with a one and one. The Gales are just five of 10 from the free throw line. Alex Dukas, a very good free throw shooter. Hits the front end, earns another. St. Mary's, Dave, over the last nearly 10 minutes, just one field goal. Dukas gets them both. Gales back to a three point lead. There are times, especially when you get into conference play, when you really have to grind it out. You've got to win an ugly game. Luke Barrett returns for Dukas. This has been really now kind of three halves of subpar offensive basketball, at least by their standards for the Gales. Good closeout by Marshallonis. Now Alec with a post touch. Spinning on Saxon. Tough shot off the window. Mitchell forced the miss, collects the board. Gales have missed six of their last seven shots. They have a three-point lead. Johnson. That pick and roll has been taken away by New Mexico since the opening minutes. Gales are going to have to find another source of offense. Marshallonis. Good move. And the finish. Wow. Back and forth like a hypnotist watch and then took it to the left hand with that tough one-handed floater in the key. That is not an easy shot. So the Gale lead back to five, 22-17, two and a half minutes to play. House has been hot early for the Lobos. Off front, Iron with the three, and good hustle by Alec as he wards off Bowen for the rebound, calls timeout with 2.23 to go, so the Lobos will retain possession. Gales are seven of 21 from the field, Dave. New Mexico, six of 21, but you know, if early, kind of stats and results or any indication, 
The Gales are much more comfortable playing in a game like this than is New Mexico. Over the years, that St. Mary's basketball, slow tempo, grind it out in the half court. In terms of tempo, the Gales have the edge, and for New Mexico, I'm sure, even though they're not playing at such a high level for them, they would take it being only down five as poorly as they played. Mickey McConnell talked about rebounding in our pregame show. The Gales right now being outboarded by the Lobos. 16 to 15. House, Mashburn, Johnson with Dent and Alec for New Mexico. Gales counter, Johnson, Marshallonis, Dukas, Barrett, and Saxon. So Bowen off the floor with his two fouls. Five points, St. Mary's lead. House. Sends it out to Mashburn, guarded by Johnson. Seven to shoot. The freshman, Dent, looking for the pick and roll. Left hand drive, good finish. Well, he used the inside hand to get into the backboard before the defender could come over and block the shot. Nicely done. A lot of white jerseys there. Marshall Onis shakes house in the backcourt, 22-19. Here's Augustus, a lot of contact there. Augustus drives past House to the basket. Floater doesn't go, rebound cleared by the Lobos. House pushing. Here's Mashburn, scoreless so far in the first half. Tough drive, finish, and the foul. And Mashburn will go to the line for a chance at three and a tie game with 92 seconds to play in the opening half the career he's had too good to keep off the scoreboard that long that was a tough finish of course his dad played for Richard Patino's dad at Kentucky in the early 90s Jamal Mashburn long NBA career for him as well and junior completes the three-point play and we are tied at 22 Gales are just 7 of 22 from the field Johnson, Lobos converge, Johnson pivots in the paint, missed the bunny, Saxon put back, doesn't go, but he's fouled. So Saxon will go to the line for two shots, 1-10 to go. And St. Mary's has missed five free throws. Trying to read Coach Bennett's lips, tough to do, but obviously displeased with what they're doing in the half court. Passing the ball and being unable to finish around the rim. Saxon, Gales miss another free throw. They are 7 of 13 from the line. And they have 13 free throws to the Lobos, 5. Really have yet to capitalize. Richard Patino will take a timeout. And 7 between, of 23 from the floor, 1 of 9 from 3. Yeah, 1 of 9 from 3 for the Gales and 1 of 9 from 3 for... New Mexico, so this has been a purely get it around the rim, and you would need to make free throws in a game like this. Well, you look back, the Gales, two of eight from the line against Hofstra. They missed 11 free throws, 14 of 25 against Vanderbilt, and then 10 of 14 against Washington. St. Mary's works on free throws. After every practice, every shoot around, they do a competitive free throw drill. It's, it just kind of seems like one of those things, Dave, it can kind of get in your head. Just like a good offensive flow, it's contagious. Missing foul shots can be the same way. Well, there's not been much of an offensive flow tonight. New Mexico is 8 of 23. The Gales are 7 of 23. These two teams combined are 2 of 14 on threes. They've turned it over a total of 19 times. And they have just five assists. And to both teams' credit, there aren't many wide open shots where you're just missing. Everything is contested on both sides. Saxon hits the second free throw, puts the Gales up by one. And the Lobos, and they know this is kind of a, the first real litmus test for them. How real is this 6-0 record? Not going to get a whole lot of other chances outside of Mountain West play to pick up a quality win. Johnson guarded by Dukas. Here's Alec. Inside of a minute to go. House open from the left side, hits a three. Well, what a quick release. And some words with the fans in the front row. First lead for the Lobos. 
Marshall Lonis and a foul called on Saxon. Trying to roll to the basket. Another St. Mary's turnover, nine here in the first half. New Mexico has made their last three shots. The Gales are two of their last 10. And Saxon just picked up foul number two. With a lot of energy on the New Mexico bench too. They're really into it, competing at a very high level. By the way, Morris Udeze, their leading scorer, has played just six minutes in this first half. Lobos have a two-point lead. Marshallonis comes off, and Mahaney will check back in. Jefferson in there for Saxon with the two fouls. Randy Bennett searching for answers. About a six-second differential between the two clocks. So the Lobos will play for one. Dent guarded by Barrett. The freshman at the stripe with 12 on the shot clock. Lobos spread the floor, now sp spring into action. Dent with six, poked away by Luke. Recovers with four, with three, a little drive with the inside hand. That one doesn't go. Alec with the putback. Shot clock is off with four, with three. Mahaney did this once. This one won't count. And the Lobos take momentum into the break as they have a four-point lead at halftime. St. Mary's led at one point. Dave, 13 to two. Since that time, New Mexico has outscored St. Mary's 25 to 10. They have a four-point lead at halftime. And making just two of their last 10, no baskets in the last 244 for the Gales. Credit to New Mexico for really hanging in there. I thought Coach Patino may have called a couple of early timeouts when it was starting to maybe get a little bit away from them, but they hung in there, grinded away, took it possession by possession, and sure enough, take a four-point lead into the locker room. The Lobos have been able to hold on to the ball as well for the last five minutes, and as a result, they've made four of their last five, and five, and right now, the flow, the offense, for New Mexico over the last five minutes is coming easier than it is at the other end for St. Mary's. That was a tough matchup on the last possession. Dent is a lightning quick point guard and Barrett really trying to defend about 35 feet away from the rim. That's a tough matchup. Got to the rim. The defense had to come over and help out creating that second chance opportunity. How do the Gales fix this in the second half offensively? I mean, seven of 23 with nine turnovers. That is a far cry from what the Gales have been for the first seven games. The first few possessions, they were really trying to get the ball into the post, going four out and one in to maybe make New Mexico collapse and create some open shots. We'll see what Coach Bennett cooks up for the second half. All right, so halftime here in Moraga, and right now it's the visitors from New Mexico with a four-point lead over St. Mary's. The Gales, no field goals over the last two minutes and 44 seconds. Dave, just two field goals over the last 13 minutes of the first half. Time out, or rather halftime here, Moraga will step aside back with more right after this as St. Mary's trails New Mexico 27-23, and you're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. Show your school spirit and earn rewards as the official credit union of St. Mary's College University Credit Union offers a custom designed rewards credit card for the Gale family. Enjoy no annual fee while earning unlimited points, making the UCU St. Mary's credit card the perfect card to use for everyday use. Plus, when you open a UCU checking account, you'll show even more Gale pride with the St. Mary's College debit card. Visit UCU.org to learn more and apply today. Federally insured by NCUA. Fourth Moore Tap Room and Grill in Orendo's Theater Square is now your official away game watch party location for St. Mary's Athletics. Enjoy apps, salads, burgers, or one of their signature handcrafted wood-fired pizzas on the patio with the giant fire pit. Plus, they offer discounts for all St. Mary's students, coaches, faculty, and alumni. Catch every game on one of their 10 big screen TVs or enjoy live music Thursday through Saturday evenings from 6.30 to 10.30. You can even have them cater your next event. For more information, visit thefourthboard.com or call 925-254-1183. Go Gales! Bay Alarm is proud to sponsor the St. Mary's Gales. How good is your defense? When it comes to protecting your home or business, Bay Alarm has been bringing the best for over 75 years. With security camera and fire alarm systems designed to fit your specific needs, expertly installed and professionally monitored 24-7. Ready to up your security game? Go to BayAlarm.com and let our team of security experts get you protected today. Go Gales! Welcome to the Visit Walnut Creek Halftime Show on the Gales Radio Network. Walnut Creek looks to brighten your world, connecting you to the best California experiences under the sun. Go to visitwalnutcreek.org to learn more. A first half recap 
stats, and more are all ahead. Back courtside, here's Alex Jensen. Well, back in Moraga and New Mexico with, again, over the last half of the uh, first half, outscoring St. Mary's 25 to 10, as the Gales had just two field goals over the last 13 minutes. Alongside Dave Lewis, I'm Alex Jensen, and the Lobos lead the Gales 27-23, Dave. And since that second media timeout, when the Gales were outscoring New Mexico in the paint, eight to two, it's been 14 to four in that category for New Mexico. They're outscoring the Gales in the paint on second chance points. Their bench points, or their bench is outscoring the Gales bench. And uh, for St. Mary's, they just cannot get anything going offensively. One of the things that I thought New Mexico did a great job in doing was taking away the pick and roll. Yeah. And they had to do it, they did it without switching too. They had the post, just fight their way over the post and uh, make that entry pass so difficult to get inside, forcing St. Mary's to take a very difficult shot late in the shot clock. So I thought New Mexico did a great adjustment after the early success St. Mary's had in getting it inside, especially with Saxon. So we'll see what Coach Bennett cooks up with a full out and one in. I think Mitchell will get some big time touches early in the second half to try to get them going. How much more help was New Mexico able to bring considering the Gales are just one of nine from three. You have to be able to make some shots. So when you collapse in the post, and they even tried to get Dukas the ball down low against a smaller player, but New Mexico scrambled, double team, forcing them to throw out of it. That you got to step up and make an open jumper. Jalen House has 10 points to lead all scorers. On the other side for St. Mary, Saxon has eight points. It's been a game of turnovers. 20 between these two clubs, 11 for the Lobos, nine for the Gales. St. Mary's has eight steals. New Mexico has five. As you mentioned, Dave, got to make some shots. The Gales shot 30% for that first half, seven of 23. The Lobos were 10 of 26. They've out-rebounded St. Mary's in the first half, 18 to 16. We'll see what kind of answers uh, the Gales have coming out of the break offensively. Well, during halftime, Gales Rewind is back this season. You can find Gales Rewind, which is a uh, show that mixes highlights with thoughts from uh, Mickey McConnell during our post-game show, along with uh, our player of the game at a Gale win. In this case, it was uh, Aiden Mahaney after the Gales trip to the Wooden Legacy. You can find this wherever you get your podcast. Search St. Mary's, and you'll find uh, the St. Mary's All About the G podcast and Gales Rewind right there. So enjoy Gales Rewind from this past weekend during halftime. We'll come back shortly. Gales trail New Mexico at the break, 27 to 23. A Thanksgiving week doubleheader in Southern California saw the Gales pick up a double-digit win over an SEC team while also suffering their first defeat of the season on back-to-back -back days. I'm Alex Jensen, and this is Gales Rewind for St. Mary's trip to the Paycom Wooden Legacy in Anaheim last week. Let's begin with the Gales' 75-65 win over the Vanderbilt Commodores on Wednesday, November 23rd. St. Mary's broke a 16-16 tie, outscoring Vanderbilt 19-11 going into halftime, capped by the play of the week by freshman Aiden Mahaney. One St. Mary's Mahaney with the drive along the baseline. Beat the shot blocker Melora Brown to the rim and lays it home with the inside hand. Now Mahaney pivoting on Wessels. He'll weave to the foul line. Rise up 15 footer on the way and good for Aiden Mahaney. Man, just a buttery smooth stroke here at the Anaheim Convention Center. Mahaney now probing with the right hand, puts Mannion on his hip, rises up from eight in the middle of the paint, and hits a jumper. Dukas, right wing, guarded by Mannion, left off the screen, turns the corner to the foul line, rises up, mid-range is true for Alex Dukas. 94 feet, get into Mahaney, up the near side, Mahaney with two, with one, rises up, this will count if it goes from the stripe, he got it! Oh, Aiden Mahaney, have yourself a first half! About a 40-footer near side of the logo, and Aiden Mahaney gives the Gales a lift heading into the break. I think it was about four seconds on the clock, and uh, we had just given up a really tough defensive possession. So, you know, I was just trying to get uh, get us some momentum going into half. I figured I had a couple of dribbles, get across half court. I've, <laughs> I've shot a similar shot to, <laughs> to that shot before in high school in the last game of the season, actually. So very nice to see that one go in. You know, I think it was just a good morale and uh, momentum booster for us, especially after that defensive possession going into halftime. Aiden gave us a huge lift off the bench, especially early. He came out and got us going in that first half and then hit the big shot at the end of the half. So just took what they gave him and they tried to play the on ball kind of two on two and he shot some open shots and, and knocked him in tonight. And then at 
for him to hit that shot. It, it put us in a good spot going in the half, up eight instead of up five. So it was a big key point in the game. You know, the eight-point cushion at halftime, it feels a lot different than the than the five-point cushion. But he's, he was great tonight. Yeah, I think with our three-guard front to start, uh, me, Agusis, and Logan, I think all three of us play uh, in different ways, which I think is uh, great for us to be able to throw out different looks. I mean, it was seen even when we when we started out playing against uh, in our first five home games, they would cover us all differently and ball screens and different things like that. So for us to get uh, be able to come out here and give different looks was huge. To start the second half, it was the Commodores throwing the first punch with a 9-0 run to take their first lead of the game. But the Gales responded and broke the game open with an 11-4 spurt during the final six minutes to take their first double-digit lead of the contest en route to closing out their sixth win of the season. Through defenders with the right hand, rises up on Robbins, can't score, he rolls home, counted for LJ, and the foul on Robbins, and Johnson will go to the line, chance for a three-point play. Johnson outside right, he's tied Mahaney for a game-high 15, left off a of Wessel screen, turning the corner, one hand bounce pass to Wessels on the right block, rises up, banks it in with the right hand. Four, kicks back up top to Dukas, one off the line, rises up for a runner, off glass and good from the left side. Play, Mahaney right off the screen, now a hesitation move, and a runner off glass and good from the right side. That gives it near side to Johnson. Johnson probing, one hand bounce pass across the lane to Saxon. Rises up low left, count the basket, and he's fouled by Lawrence. Uh, offensively, I thought we were, we were pretty good. Uh, aside from the free throw shooting, we, we did a good job of getting layups against them. They, they tried to wipe us out from three. They kind of locked up with Dukas. So our guards did a really nice job of just taking what they gave us and um, played slow when they got in the paint. And then we did a pretty nice job finishing. But I thought overall we were pretty good offensively. I wish we could have separated a little bit more, but yeah, pretty good night for us. Credit to Logan for, I mean, he started us, got us going, got a bucket, got an assist, a couple assists to Saxon. So really credit to him to get our offense going. And then also big shout out to Saxon tonight. I just felt like he had really everything going for him. And when we got him the ball out down low, I just felt comfortable with him going to get a bucket. Typically they can zone a little bit and I think they zone most of the game tonight. We'll see how, how we do against that. And I think, you know, it could be good for our guys, but it'll be a quick turnaround trying to get as much as we can done with, uh, with Washington. Unfortunately for the game, a slow offensive night against the Washington zone spelt trouble as the Huskies grinded out a 68-64 overtime victory to send St. Mary's to its first loss. After trailing by as many as eight points, the Gales made a run in the second half, tying the game at 43 before an 11-2 spurt late in the ball game to give SMC a five-point lead with just 1.45 to go. Quarter for Johnson Mahaney's wide open, top of the key, takes a three, got it! Aiden Mahaney hits a three and brings the Gales to within one. The bounce pass, high post right side. Bowen drops off to Saxon, gets the other side of the glass, banks it home, and the Gales have their first lead since seven minutes to go in the first half. Side it comes to Saxon, back to the basket on Kepnog, who's playing with four fouls. Left hand hook from the left box, banks it home. Left hand hook for Saxon, the Seattle native, and a timeout taken by Mike Hopkins. Yeah, I mean, obviously, offensively, we didn't play great. We turned it over way, way too much, especially early in the first half. The second half, we did a, a much better job. But first half, we had 10 turnovers. We didn't shoot it well from the field. I thought we were just a little bit, a little bit careless with the ball. And, I, you know, it, it just puts more pressure on your defense. I thought second half, we did a, a much better job. We got a lot more open looks. We got the ball in through the middle and we got back in the game. But the Huskies pitched a shutout over the final 80 seconds of regulation, scoring five straight points to send the game to overtime, where Washington outscored the Gales 10 to Show your school spirit and earn rewards as the official credit union of St. Mary's College, University Credit Union offers a custom-designed rewards credit card for the Gale family. Enjoy no annual fee while earning unlimited points, making the UCU St. Mary's credit card the perfect card to use for everyday use. Plus, when you open a UCU check checking account, you'll show even more Gale pride with the St. Mary's College debit card. Visit ucu.org to learn more and apply today. Federally insured by NCUA. Walnut Creek offers Gales fans quick and easy access to the excitement of a vibrant city and the charm of hometown California, all in one central location. Only seven miles from campus, Walnut Creek Hotels are the official lodging partners for St. Mary's. In a sunny, upscale, and comfortable environment at the base of Mount Diablo, Walnut Creek brings together an eclectic collection of culture, award-winning shopping, hotels, sports facilities, and cuisine to make you smile at every turn. Go to visitwalnutcreek.org to explore your next adventure. My name's Tony Tornado. I write and star in my own shows and movies. My crew knows that I dream of Hollywood. They also know that I love Mountain Dew. But there's so much more they don't know. Sometimes at night, I look up at the stars and think, 
I know why Mountain Dew's so crucial to my existence, but does anybody else? See, Dew's the green gold circulating through my veins. It makes Tony Tornado believe that he can do anything. So now you know my secret. But there's so much more you don't know. Do the do. Alex Jensen, Dave Lewis back in Moraga. St. Mary's Trails, New Mexico, 27-23. And we'll take one more break. Come back with the second half right after this. You're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. Bay Alarm is proud to sponsor the St. Mary's Gales. How good is your defense? When it comes to protecting your home or business, Bay Alarm has been bringing the best for over 75 years. With security camera and fire alarm systems designed to fit your specific needs, expertly installed and professionally monitored 24-7. Ready to up your security game? Go to bayalarm.com and let our team of security experts get you protected today. Go Gales! Out here, we'd charge into the heartland with Mountain Dew. Out here, there's no rush hour, just the rush of flying wide open on glassy water at 5 a.m. with your first dew in hand. And there's no spin class, just bright green spinner bait that ironically matches your second dew. Out here, we don't just play big buck hunt, we hunt actual big bucks. And out here, the best road is off-road, and the color of your truck is mud. Out here, it's dew. Since 1990, the team at Common Interest Management has been privileged to serve boards of directors and community homeowners of many of the Bay Area's most prestigious communities. Whether working with a newly established community in the earliest stages of development or a more mature community, our experienced managers consult with the board to share best practices in all areas of community management. Common Interest tailors its services for communities of all sizes. If you are currently evaluating a new management company, please visit us at commoninterest.com. You're listening to St. Mary's Basketball on the Gales Radio Network. Once again, here's Alex Jensen. Second half here in Moraga, the Gales Trail, New Mexico, 27-23. And for St. Mary's with just seven field goals in the first half, Dave, they'll start with the basketball, looking for some offensive rhythm. I expect them to try to get sacks and some early post touches here as they start the second half. Four different Gales have two fouls to start the second half. Marshallona, Saxon, and Bowen, as well as Aiden Mahaney. Starters on the floor for St. Mary's. Marshallona, Johnson, Dukas, Bowen, and Saxon. Trailing by four. Just two field goals over the final 13 minutes of the first half. Here's a post touch for Saxon. Alec has been defending him with to uh, effectively over the... Last part of the first half, Saxon missed the bankers, and House 100 miles an hour into the front court, a quick bucket. Well, he has got such a quick first step and gets the ball off very quickly in traffic. 12 to one, the run for New Mexico. Saxon fouled from behind, he'll go to the line. 19-17 to play. And indeed, trying to get Mitchell some early touches, had one on the previous possession, getting the ball there. You know, it's hard to believe, Dave. And of course, this St. Mary's team is, is still a young club in spots. I mean, Mitchell Saxon is in a starting spot for the first time. Augustus Marshallonis is playing heavier minutes, but it's hard to believe that this is the same team that we saw hang 79 on Vermont and, you know, 78 against Oral Roberts, 76 against Hofstra. As Saxon misses another free throw. That's just the last 13 minutes, that first half. For the Gales, and just a rough stretch. Almost like a carnival game with the rim moving. Nothing seeming to fall. St. Mary's is 8 of 15 from the free throw line. They are 8 of 16 from the free throw line. Saxon goes 0 for 2. St. Mary's has shot 11 more free throws than has New Mexico. They have just three more points from the stripe. Here's Mashburn. Enters the post to Deze. Back to the basket. Spins baseline. Hook is true. So skilled, he bluffs middle, then comes back with that jump hook over the left shoulder. It is now an eight-point Lobo lead. 14-1 to one the run. Johnson hesitation, drops it off to Saxon, middle of the paint. Marshallona's three from the right side. Gales needed that one. That's a basket they had to have, and Goose hasn't shot it well from three going into play tonight. 
that could be a huge boost to the St. Mary's offense. That is the Gales' third field goal, Dave, since the 13-minute mark of the first half. And now two for 10 on threes. Udeze has just four points. Mashburn has just three. Mid-range for Junior is offline. Foul on the rebound is going to go on Kyle Bowen, and that is number four, or number three, rather, on KB. Alex's contributions have been huge for New Mexico on both ends of the court. He's got six points and seven boards, but little plays like that really amplify those numbers. Bad pass. Saxon with another. That's his fifth steal as the Gales create the turnover. Marshall Lonis does not have numbers. Drops it off to Dukas. Gales need to get organized here. Johnson asking for the basketball. So it's a five-point deficit. Another post touch for Saxon. Udeze has two fouls. Marshall Lonis left side this time. Pops out. Udeze high in the air for the board. That looked good, though. Real clean release. Mashburn in the open floor. Met by Johnson. Keeps the dribble. And now New Mexico gets set in the half court, leading by five, and House loses the dribble out of bounds. 13th New Mexico turnover, that ties their season high. Gales, though, have just six points off those 13 giveaways. Entering play tonight, averaging 10 turnovers a game. Duke is fighting for position. Low left, fouled by Javante Johnson. Second foul on New Mexico of the second half. Johnson is first. Gales will have it on the baseline with 22 on the shot clock. 17.35 on the game clock. St. Mary's trails by five. Dukas, it's been quiet. Five points on one of three shooting. Missed off the rim, gets his own board. Marshallonis, penetrate, kick out. Dukas right side, three! Great decision by Goose. He had a tough shot in the key, but a wide open Dukas to bang in the three. Well, back-to-back -back triples for St. Mary's. They're within two. And the multiple penetrations. Something Randy Bennett always talks about. Mashburn got behind Johnson, who went for the steal. Knocks in the mid-range. Mashburn using that flare screen nicely, and then when Logan gambled for the steal, Mashburn free to knock on the jumper. LJ on Jamal Mashburn Jr. Looking for Saxon down low. He's got it now. Dukas run off the line this time, takes a drive, offensive foul. Mashburn draws the charge, and Dukas is trying to say he was in the restricted area. Now Eric Curry coming over from the far side, and they will change it. And this will be free throws, I believe, for Dukas. So Eric Curry came from the far side and overruled Vern Harris, who's the lead official. And that should be free throws for Alex Dukas. Richard Pitino doesn't like it, but by watching his body language, knows that was the right call. So that's the second now on Mashburn's third team foul on New Mexico. Jamal Mashburn, or rather uh, the Lobos, Dave, as Dukas' first free throw rims in. Remember, they started this game one of seven. And now 12 of their last 23. Second free throw up coming for Dukas. Makes it a two-point game. They've really tried to get the ball into the post, whether it's Dukas or Saxon early in this half. Dukas is the first scale into double figures. Alec. Bowen's playing with three fouls. And there's his fourth. So that's a big foul in this game as Bowen's going to have to come off. It'll get Joshua Jefferson, the freshman, off the bench. KB, no points, two rebounds and assists, four fouls in 19 minutes. Alec has been a handful tonight. Udeze, handoff to House. Chased by Marshall Onis, probing. 10 on the shot clock, Mashburn. Off the screen, patient, scoops it up, high off the window, no good. Udeze, offensive board, the putback is blocked. Not sure if that was Saxon or Jefferson. Both were in the area. Gales can tie the game here. SSC! 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 
Saxon, he's just two for six tonight. He's got that shot all night long. He just has not been able to convert. House wants to push. Dribbles into a transition three, big swing. And having some dialogue with the fans here in Moraga. New Mexico, three for seven from deep. Again, they don't take a lot. House has all five threes for the Lobos, who lead by five. Trying to get it to Saxon again. Backing down on Alec, jump stop, foul, shot does not go down. Saxon will go to the line. He also missed a lot of shots in the paint tonight, Dave. Yeah, Randy Bennett with his hands behind his head, body language saying, what do we have to do to get someone to finish? Well, Mitchell Saxon will be going to the line after this timeout. New Mexico has outscored the Gales out of the break, nine to eight. They've got a five point lead. And we will step aside from Moraga. 15-17 to play in our ball game tonight. New Mexico 36, St. Mary's 31. Back with more after this. You're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. Panini's Ristorante has been delivering quality food and beverages to the Moraga area for years and is a proud hometown partner of St. Mary's College Athletics. Casual dining with the whole family or an adult night out, they have you covered. Visit them at 1375 Moraga Way for a wonderful experience. Panini's Restaurante. Diablo Valley Insurance Agency is a full-service, independent insurance brokerage located in Walnut Creek. Founded in 1956, our agency has been providing insurance services to clients throughout Northern California and the Western United States for over 50 years. Our team of insurance professionals will take the time to understand your needs, whether personal or related to your business, and provide the best products and services for you. Go to DiabloValleyInsurance.com today to request a quote. Diablo Valley Insurance Agency. Local. Independent. Trusted. Show your school spirit and earn rewards as the official credit union of St. Mary's College, University Credit Union offers a custom-designed rewards credit card for the Gale family. Enjoy no annual fee while earning unlimited points, making the UCU St. Mary's credit card the perfect card to use for everyday use. Plus, when you open a UCU checking account, you'll show even more Gale pride with the St. Mary's College debit card. Visit ucu.org to learn more and apply today. Federally insured by NCUA. This is Kyle Bowen, and you're listening to Gals Basketball. 15-17 to play in Moraga. New Mexico leads St. Mary's 36-31. Outscored the Gales 25-10 to end the first half, and the Lobos so far 4 of 7 from the field here in the second. The Gales 2 of 6, Dave. And at the second media time out of that first half, St. Mary's is outscoring New Mexico 8-2 to in the paint. It's now a 20-12 to advantage for the Lobos. The Gales have missed a lot of bunnies tonight. As Saxon goes to the line for two shots, misses his first, another missed free throw for the St. Mary's. They are 10 of 19. If you're Randy Bennett and the shots aren't falling from the field, you want to get to the line, get to the basket, and get some easy ones, and nothing easy tonight for St. Mary's. Saxon will take another try. Mahaney is checked back in for the Gale. Saxon gets his second. Here comes K.J. Jenkins back into the game for the Lobos. Javante Johnson will come off. We've seen Richard Patino go small a lot tonight. New Mexico, they've been able to kind of force transition on St. Mary's. Outscoring the Gales 7-0 on the fast break. Four-point Lobo advantage. Udeze out for House. Entry pass, and Jefferson coming from behind Alec commits the foul. First foul on Joshua. Third team foul on the Gales here in the second half. And while guys like House have been difference makers with the points, I think Alec really has been critical to New Mexico's success here tonight. His activity has been a difference maker. House just outside the nail. Here's Udeze backing down on Saxon. Help comes, Udeze spins baseline. Almost traveled, now leans in, and a foul is called on Mitchell Saxon, and that is number three. Crowd wants a travel. So did I. And two shots upcoming on Udez, or for Udeze, rather. And New Mexico, unlike St. Mary's, has been perfect from the line tonight. That will get Harry Wessels off the bench. 14.46 to go, and Udeze, who is a 70% free throw shooter, will have two shots. Yeah, Udeze stumbled to the basket. Exchanged pivot feet 
and bailed out with that foul call. Maybe most concerning, Dave, for St. Mary's is Sudeze and Mashburn have combined for just nine points for the Lobos, and St. Mary's trails. First free throw good for Udeze. Wessels returns for Saxon, who has three fouls. First action for the freshman out of Australia. Udeze can make this a half dozen point lead again. And he does. And in a game like this, a seven point spread, six point spread, feels like a lot because the points yep. are so hard to come by. Gales have just nine field goals. They are nine of 29 from the field. They've turned it over nine times. Mahaney, Johnson, Dukas, Jefferson, and Wessels. Dukas wants the drive. A lot of contact. Shot goes up no good. Foul called on Forsland. That may have been a bit of a makeup call. It looked like, I think it was Mashburn reached in from behind on Dukas on the drive. So more free throws upcoming for St. Mary's where they are just 11 of 20. And you mentioned it, the same number of field goals as turnovers. That's bizarre. It's been that kind of night after a, a white hot start for the Gales. Got out to a 13 to two lead. Lucas hits both, back to a four point deficit. A lot of time left. New Mexico with five team fouls here in the second half. St. Mary's with four. Both Bowen and Saxon on the Gale bench with foul trouble. Here's Alec, guarded by the freshman Jefferson. Jump stop, point blank, gets to go. So quick, got that first step into the key and using his body to get that jump hook off. Deficit back to a half dozen. The Lobos are five of eight from the field here in the second half. Three freshmen on the floor right now for St. Mary's as Mahaney and Dukas run into each other away from the ball. Jefferson, 12 to shoot. LJ has been quiet. Jefferson, nice move, drops it off to Wessels, leans in, another missed layup. Wessels gets his own board, it's poked away. Man. If the Gales can make a layup, Dave, they'd have the lead. You just have to keep doing what you're doing, believe in the system, and believe the shots will eventually fall. Seven footer forcefully, nice play by Jefferson. And calls a timeout as he was knocked to the ground by Alec. 14th New Mexico turnover. Gales have 34 points with 13.27 to play in the second half. They trail New Mexico by six. And a timeout taken by Randy Bennett. We will step aside as well. New Mexico 40, St. Mary's 34. Back with more after this. You're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. Fourth Board Tap Room and Grill in Orendo's Theater Square is now your official away game watch party location for St. Mary's Athletics. Enjoy apps, salads, burgers, or one of their signature handcrafted wood-fired pizzas on the patio with the giant fire pit. Plus, they offer discounts for all St. Mary's students, coaches, faculty, and alumni. Catch every game on one of their 10 big screen TVs or enjoy live music Thursday through Saturday evenings from 6.30 to 10.30. You can even have them cater your next event. For more information, visit thefourthboard.com or call 925-254-1183. Go Gales! Walnut Creek offers Gales fans quick and easy access to the excitement of a vibrant city and the charm of hometown California, all in one central location. Only seven miles from campus, Walnut Creek Hotels are the official lodging partners for St. Mary's. In a sunny, upscale, and comfortable environment at the base of Mount Diablo, Walnut Creek brings together an eclectic collection of culture, award-winning shopping, hotels, sports facilities, and cuisine to make you smile at every turn. Go to visitwalnutcreek.org to explore your next adventure. My name's Tony Tornado. I write and star in my own shows and movies. My crew knows that I dream of Hollywood. They also know that I love Mountain Dew. But there's so much more they don't know. Sometimes at night, I look up at the stars and think, I know why Mountain Dew's so crucial to my existence. But does anybody else? See, Dew's the green gold circulating through my veins. It makes Tony Tornado believe that he can do anything. So now you know my secret. But there's so much more you don't know. Do the do. This is Harry Wessels, more St. Mary's basketball coming up. 13-27 to go in our ball game. Gales will have the basketball, and Dave Lewis a long way to go in this game tonight, but 
St. Mary's, as we said, coming out of halftime, they're going to have to find something offensively. And I think the way they're, they're playing here in the second half is what they're trying to do is when the shots are difficult from anywhere is get to the basket, get a five-footer, try to draw a foul, but get something near the rim. Mahaney, Johnson, Dukas, Jefferson, and Wessels. Three freshmen on the floor for St. Mary's. Here's a po post up for Dukas. Gets position, goes up, scores with the right hand. They take advantage of that body that Dukas has inside that size advantage. Gets something near the iron. Well, before that make, the Gales were 6 of 28 on twos. Finally gets something close in to drop. They trail by four. House chased by Johnson. Donovan Dent is into the game, driving on Mahaney. Dukas knocks the dribble away, nine to shoot. House finds Forsling on the roll, blocked at the rim by Wessels. Wow. Here comes LJ. Mahaney for three, no. Offensive board to Wessels, stripped, foul. And Wessels will go to the line. Forsling thought he got fouled on the Wessels block at the rim. And the freshman will now have two shots with 12.36 to go. Not much argument from the New Mexico coaching staff. So two free throws here for Wessels. The foul was on Dent, his first. Sixth team foul on the Lobos. And Wessels with two shots. First is up and good. These are big minutes for Wessels with Saxon needing a break and, of course, Bowen saddled with the four fouls. Deze back onto the floor for the Lobos. Forsling comes off. Mashburn returns. And House off the floor for Richard Patino. Second free throw for Wessels. Good. Oh, now it's a two point game. Can the Gales defense retake control of this game? Ashburn, some space, knocks down a three. Once again, a big shot for New Mexico guard. He has been too good for too long to hold for an entire game. It was House turning a two-point Lobo advantage to five with a three earlier. This time it's Mashburn. Dukas, same spot, turns middle. Well, with Jenkins guarding him, Dave, and giving up so much size, the Gales are going to keep going back to Dukas at that spot if that remains the case. They're going to have to double or switch defenders on him. Dukas has 16. Mashburn, elbow jumper. He's starting to feel it. Whoa, he rises up so high off the elbow and a very quick release. Well, he was just about shut out in the first half. He's in the double figures now with 10. Knocked out of bounds, timeout on the floor. So, the Lobos holding a five-point lead, and New Mexico is seven for 11 in the second half. St. Mary's showing some line, signs of life offensively, but looking for some answers now on the defensive side in half number two. We'll step aside, 11.33 to play. New Mexico 45, St. Mary's 40. This is Gales basketball from Learfield. Diablo Valley Insurance Agency is a full-service, independent insurance brokerage located in Walnut Creek. Founded in 1956, our agency has been providing insurance services to clients throughout Northern California and the Western United States for over 50 years. Our team of insurance professionals will take the time to understand your needs, whether personal or related to your business, and provide the best products and services for you. Go to DiabloValleyInsurance.com today to request a quote. Diablo Valley Insurance Agency. Local. Independent. Trusted. Panini's Ristorante has been delivering quality food and beverages to the Moraga area for years and is a proud hometown partner of St. Mary's College Athletics. Casual dining with the whole family or an adult night out, they have you covered. Visit them at 1375 Moraga Way for a wonderful experience. Panini's Ristorante. Since 1990, the team at Common Interest Management has been privileged to serve boards of directors and community homeowners of many of the Bay Area's most prestigious communities. Whether working with a newly established community in the earliest stages of development or a more mature community, our experienced managers consult with the board to share best practices in all areas of community management. Common Interest tailors its services for communities of all sizes. If you are currently evaluating a new management company, please visit us at commoninterest.com. This is Luke Barrett. Stay tuned because more St. Mary's basketball is on the way. 
New Mexico is shooting 46% for the game. The Gales at 33. St. Mary's trails by five. 45-40. Lobos on top. Mahaney, Johnson, Dukas, Jefferson, and Wessels break for St. Mary's. And they will have the basketball with 20 on the shot clock for New Mexico. Dent, Jenkins, Mashburn Jr., Alec, and Udeze. Five-point Lobo advantage. Johnson with the left-hand drive. Tough shot. Wessels grabs the board. Mahaney is wide open and hits a three. Huge basket off the offensive rebound, and the freshman so calm, knocking in a big one. Well, back to two again. Can the Gales get a stop here? Alec checked by Jefferson. Here's Mashburn off a screen. Tough. Jay, wow. He is really feeling it this half. Yeah, you could not defend that any better. Second half, Jamal Mashburn Jr. Nine points, four of six shooting. For the second half, the Lobos are eight of 12. Wessels fumbled the catch, loose ball on the floor, picked up by the Lobos. Here comes Mashburn Jr. Udeze trailing the play. Alec has Johnson on the post. Now he's got it. Here comes Jefferson, help side, rotate around, wide open dent for three. Man. They had to double down with a Desi matchup against Johnson, and once they did, the scramble and the wide open three. Well, once New Mexico weathered that early storm, came back to take the lead before the half, this is, looks like a confident team right now. They're back up by seven. Wessels wants to go to work. Right hand hook, way too strong. Here comes Saxon off the bench. Dent in the open floor, fouled by Mahaney. 9.51 to go. And will they give him free throws here? No shot, says Eric Curry. Third foul on Mahaney. 15 foul on the Gales here in the second half. Saxon returns for Wessels. And while they lose some scoring with Howes out of the game. I really like Dent. He pushes yep. the ball, he gets them into what they want to do. That's a good guard combination for New Mexico. I mean, even with Howes out of the game, as you mentioned, Dave, three quality guards. Boy, Mashburn really wants the ball. Here's Zudeze now backing down on Saxon, who has three fouls. Tough shot, got it to go. Biggest lead now for the Lobos. And they are playing with such confidence after a very slow start. And the Gales need to do something to turn the tie. New Mexico is 10 of 14 in the second half. Bowen back off the bench. Here's Mahaney through traffic. Tough shot, gets to go down. Use that left hand to get to the rim before the shot blocker could get there. The Gales need to get some stops and get this crowd back into the game. They trail by seven. Mashburn. It's a great one-on-one -on -one matchup. Mashburn fouled by... Jefferson hedging the screen. Next foul will put New Mexico at the line. Jefferson comes off now, and here comes Bowen with four fouls. The former Marquette coach, Al McGuire, used to say when a player would get four, he'd leave him out there because he can't help you anymore. It's go for it, see what you can do out there. So Jenkins will trigger from the far side. Box set for New Mexico. 20 on the shot clock. Both teams one foul away from earning the bonus. Still 9.05 to go here. Tough pass, knocked away by Bowen. Mahaney, Gales get the steal. Credit New Mexico, by the way, Dave, for uh, rebounding after just a horrific first half offensively. At least in the early going. Nice play, Bowen gets the lay-in. Bowen creating the steal to get the ball and then the big finish for St. Mary's. So back down to five, the lead for the Lobos who are 10 of 14 in the second half. Bowen has four fouls, he's guarding Alec. Driving baseline, kick out, Johnson with the steal. Here comes LJ. And he lost it. Out of bounds, last touch by Dent. 8.17 to play. Gales trail by five. House will check back in. 
And now you've got to deal with House and Mashburn on the floor at the same time as Jenkins comes off. And New Mexico, not a team that's known for their three-point shooting. They've, they've been selective tonight. They are five of nine. Mahaney will trigger when Dukas off a double screen. Lob it in. Saxon on the catch, fouled by Alec. So, 8-17 to go. The Gales are now in the bonus. They have shot 24 free throws tonight. They're 15 of 24. And Mitchell Saxon, who has missed six free throws, will go to the line for a one and one. 8-17 to play. Gales trail by five. Alec, that's his third foul. Seventh team foul on New Mexico. 31 fouls have been called in this game. 27 turnovers, 11 assists. Front end, no good. Gales have missed 10 free throws. They're 15 of 25. Mashburn. Free throw line, Jay. Not there this time. Saxon with the board. Mashburn surprised he missed. He's been just about automatic here in the second half. Inside of eight minutes to play, the Gales trail by five. It's been a challenge offensively tonight. Saxon on Alec, diagonal pass, Bowen for three. Yes! Wow. The Moxie playing with four fouls, two huge baskets, and a steal for Bowen. So the New Mexico State, or the uh, New Mexico Dev, uh, lead, rather, back down to two again. Alec on the catch, runs into Bowen, blocking foul, called on Bowen. He is fouled out of the game. Bowen is done as he tried to draw the charge on Alec. And with 7.18 to go, the Gales will have to try and overcome what has been a slow offensive night tonight, Dave, without one of their best defenders. As Kyle Bowen is fouled out, five points, two rebounds, and a timeout on the floor will step aside as well. Alec, one and one free throws upcoming, 7-18 to play. Gales trail New Mexico by two, and you're listening to St. Mary's basketball from Learfield. Out here, we'd charge into the heartland with Mountain Dew. Out here, there's no rush hour, just the rush of flying wide open on glassy water at 5 a.m. with your first dew in hand. And there's no spin class, just bright green spinner bait that ironically matches your second do. Out here, we don't just play big buck hunt, we hunt actual big bucks. And out here, the best road is off-road, and the color of your truck is mud. Out here, it's do. Bay Alarm is proud to sponsor the St. Mary's Gales. How good is your defense? When it comes to protecting your home or business, Bay Alarm has been bringing the best for over 75 years. With security camera and fire alarm systems designed to fit your specific needs, expertly installed and professionally monitored 24-7. Ready to up your security game? Go to BayAlarm.com and let our team of security experts get you protected today. Go Gales! Walnut Creek offers Gales fans quick and easy access to the excitement of a vibrant city and the charm of hometown California, all in one central location. Only seven miles from campus, Walnut Creek Hotels are the official lodging partners for St. Mary's. In a sunny, upscale, and comfortable environment at the base of Mount Diablo, Walnut Creek brings together an eclectic collection of culture, award-winning shopping, hotels, sports facilities, and cuisine to make you smile at every turn. Go to visitwalnutcreek.org to explore your next adventure. You're listening to St. Mary's Basketball on the Gales Radio Network. 7-18 to play here in Moraga. Gales Trail, New Mexico, 52-50. St. Mary's for the game shooting 39%. They are 50% in the second half. New Mexico, though, has bested the Gales at every turn since the opening minutes. 10 of 15 in the second half. They have not missed a free throw yet, and Josiah Alec has a one and one. That charge block call is the toughest in basketball to make, and it could have been a big swing for St. Mary's if Bowen draws the charge, can stay in that game. He scored five points in about a minute to get his team within two. Luke Barrett will check in in his place. Alec hits both free throws, and the Lobos stay perfect from the line. 
They've got a four-point lead. That's the difference in this game right now. The Gales have missed 10 free throws. New Mexico is nine of nine. 54-50. Mahaney, Johnson, Dukas, Barrett, and Saxon. Bad pass, looking for the roller. And House, another steal. That's his fourth. Here is House on the freshman. Shake and bake. Pivots, scoops it up, can't get it. Saxon with the board. Mahaney held his ground nicely there. Inside of seven minutes to play. Gales have turned it over just three times in this second half. Dukas, mid-range, yes. He has really come alive this half, doing most of his work on the post, but able to step out and knock in the jumper. That time they put the 6'8 Alec on him. And Dukas said, you're gonna give me a little room. 15-footer. Gales back to within two. The freshman, Donovan Dent, pick and roll with Udezi for the jam. Udeze, he's been quiet tonight. He does have 10 points now. New Mexico, 65% in the second half. They're 11 of 17. LJ, through traffic. Dukas wants a three, and he got it! Pulling that big man away from the iron. You're gonna have to check him out there, and when he does, he's able to go off the bounce. While well, Randy Bennett has gone small, he's put Dukas at the four and Barrett at the three. And St. Mary's now within one. Five and a half minutes to play. House. Udeze looking for a high low with Alec. Barrett is fronting the post. Outside it goes to Dent. Dent in traffic, tough shot. Man, how'd he get that to go? Wow, Mr. Basketball in the state of California showing why he was such a highly sought after recruit. And there were two white jerseys there, somehow squeezed it off, finishes off the window. 58-55. Mahaney pressured by House. Mahaney steps back, long two. Just looked away the defender, rose up and with so much poise, knocking in jumper to get his team within one. Gales are getting some rhythm back into their offense. 4-4 you go, we're getting close to crunch time. Dent with Udeze. Left hand, inside hand, boy, so quick to the rim. And with big time players like Mashburn and House on the floor, it's the freshman Dent taking over down the stretch. I think we had questions about how real this 6-0 record for New Mexico was, Dave, and despite the slow offensive night for St. Mary's, New Mexico has been able to score. Barrett thought about the three, 10 to shoot. Dukas run off the line with a right hand off the window and good. 23 for Alex Dukas. Alec had to show respect after Dukas knocked in the jumpers that freed Alex to take him off the bounce. 13 of 19 in the second half for the Lobos. Boy, what a finish we've got here in Moraga. Dena hesitation and a reach in foul called on Luke Barrett with 347 to go. One and one free throws upcoming for Donovan Dent, where he is 11 of 19 on the season. And we have a timeout here in Moraga, and this game has just gotten interesting with the reawakening of the Gale offense. It's a real chess match down the stretch. Randy Bennett into it now in a big way on the sideline. 3.47 to play. Free throws upcoming for the Lobos. They lead St. Mary's 60 to 59. We'll step aside from Moraga. You're listening to Gale's basketball from Learfield. Show your school spirit and earn rewards as the official credit union of St. Mary's College, University Credit Union offers a custom-designed rewards credit card for the Gale family. Enjoy no annual fee while earning unlimited points, making the UCU St. Mary's credit card the perfect card to use for everyday use. Plus, when you open a UCU checking account, you'll show even more Gale pride with the St. Mary's College debit card. Visit ucu.org to learn more and apply today. Federally insured by NCUA.
Fourth Floor Tap Room and Grill in Orendo's Theater Square is now your official away game watch party location for St. Mary's Athletics. Enjoy apps, salads, burgers, or one of their signature handcrafted wood-fired pizzas on the patio with the giant fire pit. Plus, they offer discounts for all St. Mary's students, coaches, faculty, and alumni. Catch every game on one of their 10 big screen TVs or enjoy live music Thursday through Saturday evenings from 6.30 to 10.30. You can even have them cater your next event. For more information, visit thefourthboard.com or call 925-254-1183. Go Gales! Bay Alarm is proud to sponsor the St. Mary's Gales. How good is your defense? When it comes to protecting your home or business, Bay Alarm has been bringing the best for over 75 years. With security camera and fire alarm systems designed to fit your specific needs, expertly installed and professionally monitored 24-7. Ready to up your security game? Go to BayAlarm.com and let our team of security experts get you protected today. Go Gales! This is Logan Johnson, and you're listening to St. Mary's Basketball. Crunch time here in Moraga. St. Mary's trails New Mexico 60-59 to with 3.47 to go. Donovan Dent will go to the line for a one-and-one one here for the Lobos, who have not missed a free throw yet tonight. They are 9-of-9. Nine nine. And oh, this kid, this is a stacked guard line, Dave. I mean, I've really been impressed with these New Mexico guards, House, Mashburn, Dent, and Jenkins. Makes them so hard to guard here, Alex, because when St. Mary's wants to go big and take advantage of their size on the post, Dent makes them so hard to guard on the other end. It's the first free throw. Again, the player of the year in California a year ago out of Centennial High School. I think the Lobos have answered a lot of questions tonight, Dave. I mean, this they finally miss a free throw. And Johnson collects the long rebound. This is a 6-0 record that was questioned. I think the Lobos are for real. Mahaney. Overplay, Dent with the steal and the foot race and a four point Lobo lead. Dent has the last seven for New Mexico. And that turnover was a killer. Here's Mahaney, he's seen a lot of contact between he and Jalen House. 3.15 to play, it's a four point Gale deficit. Mahaney, Johnson back to Mahaney, relocates the corner, three comes up short, rebound to Dent. Three minutes to go, New Mexico, they have operated offensively at a high level here in the second half, 14 of 20. Udeze, backing down on Saxon. Gets it off the poke away, now leaning in, can't finish, rolls all the way around and out. Boy, bodies everywhere. Dukas hit the floor hard, and he's slow coming back the other way. Gales need a bucket here with two and a half minutes to go. Randy Bennett wants a timeout, and he will get one. So Marshall Onis will come to the game here, 2.29 to go, and New Mexico has a four-point lead. It's a big break for St. Mary's because Odeze's shot was halfway down, and he released it from about three feet away from yeah. the basket. Outside of Alex Dukas from the field tonight. Now St. Mary's is 12 of 34, that's 33%. Dukas leads the way for the Gales with 23 points on seven of 10 shooting. You know, for the Gales defense, I mean, this, this, one of the top 10 defensive teams in the country today, they've had a hard time stopping the quickness and athleticism of this New Mexico guard line. There's so many options for New Mexico. I was looking at the five they had out there that they could throw out there, and all five of those guys could score if you gave them the ball one-on-one. -on -one. So this is a tough matchup for St. Mary's. I know I, I like the guys they have out there to take advantage of their size at the other end, but it makes them susceptible to being beaten off the bounce at the other end defensively. Right now they trail by four. Dent has a season high. 12 points. His usage has really skyrocketed today over the last five games. 11 minutes in the opener against Southern Utah, seven against South Alabama. Tonight he's played 22 minutes, 19 against Northern Colorado, 21 against North Dakota State, 24 against Jacksonville State, 20 at SMU. Previous high, nine against Jacksonville State, and the difference maker tonight in the second half. Jalen House has been quiet here in the second half, 15 points total, and uh, just five of them have come in half number two. Mashburn has a dozen for the Lobos. 2.29 to play, four points St. Mary's deficit. 
Marshall Lonis enters the game now for the Gales, replacing Barrett as St. Mary's goes with three guards. Mahaney will trigger. 20 on the shot clock. Johnson with the basketball. He's been quiet tonight, just four points. Dukas into the paint. Outside to LJ, extra pass Mahaney, corner three. Pinballs out, rebound kept alive by Saxon, but gathered by House, and now New Mexico leading by four. Can kind of take a little bit of air out of the basketball here, Dave. They are 14 of 21 in the second half. Four points seems like a lot in a game like this. Den on Marshallonis pulls it back, changes pace. Can't finish off the window. Saxon with the board. Inside of two minutes left. Here's Dukas, back to Marshallonis. Had a hard time getting the ball to Saxon. He's got it now, but he's 17 feet from the basket. It's a, nope. Jalen House came from behind, knocked away the back cut. Another St. Mary's turnover, that's 14. Got to have a stop here, AJ. And so you almost have to pitch a shutout inside of 90 seconds to play. The freshman Dent, as you mentioned, has been so big in the second half. Dent, Udeze, jam, foul, exclamation point. And oh, that'd be a technical. That was not smart. That was not smart by Morris Udeze, who dunked it and then bodied up on Saxon, had a couple words for him. It's a six point New Mexico lead. It's an and one for Udeze. The Gales will get two free throws and the ball with 114 to go. After this free throw, that was not a smart play by Morris Udeze. And he's pleading his case, but I, I thought that was pretty obvious. Because for New Mexico, you're on the verge of getting some huge separation at this point of the game. And now you open the door for St. Mary's. Well, for St. Mary's Day, uh, you look at their last two games against Washington and now here against New Mexico. And the Gales shot just 38%. You know, from three, and you brought up the point about, you know, the Gales outside shooting against their, shooting inside the arc on the year, and it really kind of begs the question, you know, if the Gales, to this point in the season, if the Gales are not connecting from three, well, what's really their answer offensively? Because tonight, six of 18 from three against Washington, six of 29 from three. They have yet to break 60 tonight. They had 64 points against the Huskies in 45 minutes. Well, typical strategic basketball is if your threes don't fall, you've got to get something else. You've got to get mid-range, get to the basket, and get fouled. St. Mary's is getting around the basket, but they're not able to finish, and they're not able to make their free throws. So you, that's a bad combo in a very tight game. We're making the announcement now. The Gales have gone quiet again. They're gone three minutes without any points, so... Two free throws for Alex Dukas on the technical by Udeze. There was a foul on Saxon, his fourth. And Dukas will have two free throws here. He hits the first. Dukas has really been the offense for the Gales in the second half. He's got 19 of their 37. It's both free throws here. Four point game with 114 to go. And now Udeze will shoot the and one. New Mexico is 10 of 11 from the stripe. That technical really kind of keeps the door ajar here for St. Mary's. Still a two possession game with plenty of time left. You still have to get a stop at the other end and keep them from driving to the rim. Who does that? Got it. 66 61. So we're approaching a minute left to play. Gales trail by five. Marshallonis. Johnson on the baseline, finds Saxon, leans in, finishes off the window. Tried to draw the foul rather than just go straight up with it, but still lucky enough to get the two. Well, still a one possession game. Do not need to foul. House guarded by Mahaney near the timeline. 17 to shoot, Dent. 14 to shoot. 33 on the game clock. Dent makes his move, met by Dukas. Now with a drive, little runner blocked by Marshallonis. Out of bounds with two to shoot, 26.3 on the game clock. And Richard Patino will take 
a timeout. 66-63, the New Mexico lead. 26.3 on the game clock. The Lobos will have two to shoot, and they'll have a baseline out of bounds. Gales have outscored the Lobos, actually, in the second half, 40-39. to 39. And they've made eight of their last ten. But New Mexico, again, has just had the answer at every single turn. And this out-of-bounds play, Dave, is essentially the ballgame. Do you think Richard Pitino, working with his dad over the years and guys like Billy Donovan, has a baseline out-of-bounds or two up his sleeve right now? I have to imagine he does. Now, another wrinkle here, Dave, is the fact that the Gales have 19 fouls, so their next foul, even if they get a bucket and they have to foul New Mexico, it'll be two free throws on the other end. Now, I guess the other question for New Mexico is, do you foul if the Gales get a stop here up by three with the shot clock off? The age-old question. Yeah, Coach Bennett forever never believed in that strategy up by three, got burned a couple times and changed his thinking depending on the situation. For New Mexico, Dave, I mean, what a win this would be for this program. And to come into this building where the Gales have won 23 in a row. They've gone 19 and 35 combined over the last two years, 13 and 19 in Richard Patino's first season. And they're trying to legitimize this 6-0 start. Their best start in 10 years. The year they went 12-0 and 12-13, and went 27-7 and on the season, 15-3 and in the Mountain West, earned a three seed in the NCAA tournament. They're trying to return to postseason play for the first time since 2014. It's the kind of game that would give you a great non-conference resume when you get to being maybe a bubble team or an at-large team. So Dent will inbound, two on the shot clock, for the Lobos, Mashburn, House, Alec, and Udeze on the floor for New Mexico. Gales need a stop, they're down by three. Dent looking, lobs it in. Mashburn on the catch, three at the end of the clock. No good, Dukas with the rebound. Gales can tie here. Where do you go for a quick two or does New Mexico foul? Johnson with 17, backing down. Trying to lean in, stripped out of his hands. Well, oh, he thought there was a foul. New Mexico with the steal, and House is fouled. And that will send the Lobos down to the other end of the floor with 12 seconds left. The 15th turnover of the night for St. Mary's. And that could prove to ice the game for the Lobos. House, an outstanding foul shooter throughout his entire career. Here comes Joshua Jefferson. The Gales, Dave, have won 29 straight in this building, going all the way back to November 11th, 2019, the loss to Winthrop. Saxon comes off and Jefferson comes on. Several Gales remember that night. Twelve seconds left, House. First free throw is good. be the first back-to-back -back losses, barring a miracle for the Gales since March 8th and 17th in the postseason in that 2021 season. House gets both. Five-point lead for New Mexico. Shot clock is off. Ten seconds to play. Marshallonis, Gales have to go quick here. Mahaney with a drive, hangs and finishes off the window. Brandy Bennett will take a timeout with 4.1 left, so still Oxygen in the Gales' lungs here. You need a steal with 4.1 left. A steal and a three would tie the game. Trailing by three. And Four. no timeouts remaining now for Randy Bennett. There's so many things to lament in this game for St. Mary's. Ten missed free throws. Now that stretch, 13 minutes, just two field goals in the first half. I mean, it, the Gales had a 13-2 lead in this game. And offensively, just and they went a stretch of six and a half minutes without scoring, or without a field goal, rather. Another stretch of four minutes. 
it doesn't feel like St. Mary's shot 58% this half. No. That's because New Mexico has shot 60. Now Richard Patino still has a timeout left, so if the Lobos fail to inbound here, they do have a timeout to burn. Jenkins will inbound, checking back in. Dent, House, Mashburn, and Alec. Yale's counter, Johnson, Mahaney, Marshallonis, Jefferson, and Dukas. 4.1 on the clock. Jenkins gets it into Dent. Dent is fouled by Marshallonis with 1.6 on the clock. Took a little too long to foul him. Yep. Well, the Gales need to hope for a miss and essentially a full court heave. It's not going to get any easier for St. Mary's, of course, going to Fort Worth on Saturday to take on the number one team in the nation. And what about the year for Kelvin Sampson, their first number one Houston team since the days of Akeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler 39 years ago. Dent misses the first free throw. Freshman has been such a difference maker tonight. Second free throw on the way and good. And that will do it as Mahaney will heave. It's no good. And the Gales, their first home loss since 2019 as New Mexico. A huge win. And a 7-0 start. And your final score, New Mexico 69, St. Mary's 65. Back-to-back -back losses for the Gales. And... I mean, questions are going to arise for St. Mary's now. And for New Mexico, this is the kind of game that gets you in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. When you look at your non-conference schedule and you get a win like this on the road, that's huge for them. St. Mary's has some work to do, some soul searching and how to score. And also when you're defending against teams that have three guards like this, Coach Bennett has to make a decision, hey, we can take advantage of Dukas on the post, but then at the other end, when they go three guards, it can really take you off the balance. It makes it very difficult to defend. Well, this is now not only back-to-back -back losses, Dave, but back-to-back -back losses for the Gales in which they have 10 or more assists. Before the Washington game, over the last four-plus seasons, St. Mary's was 76-9 and nine with 10 or more assists. And when Mickey McConnell comes out here for the post-game show, it's going to be 15 of 25 in the second half from the field for New Mexico. It's going to be nine to two on the fast break for the Lobos. And outscored off the bench for the second consecutive game. All the missed free throws, all the turnovers. A lot to clean up as you head into that major challenge taking on Houston, which really has a, a real role right now. Their best start in a long time and uh, some big time talent with that team. Missed free throws, missed layups. Gales were not good in the paint for long stretches of this game and they've dropped their second consecutive game as the Lobos come in and take down the Gales 69 to 65 the Lobos are now 7-0 they remain one of the 18 unbeaten teams in uh, in the country and you look at the upcoming schedule for New Mexico they've got a really good chance Dave to go into not uh, to go into Mountain West play Still undefeated, Western New Mexico, UT San Antonio, Iona, which is that father-son matchup, of course, and Prairie View A&M all at the pit at home. And I would imagine back in Albuquerque, the excitement around this program has got to be back after tonight. When you go back to the 70s, it's a community that really loves their basketball, and they want a winner, they embrace a winner. What, Norm Ellenberger back in the 70s, Michael Cooper, old school Mel Daniels. I mean, they really embrace the Lobos, and when they're good like they are, that place will be jumping. Well, a lot, of a lot of questions to answer here for the Gales as they fall to uh, New Mexico 69 to 65. St. Mary's is now six and two. And again, a 29 game or 23 game uh, home winning streak is snapped. 29 straight wins against non-conference teams here at University Credit Union Pavilion. That'll do it for our uh, video stream here on WCC Network. Our post game show will continue next on the Varsity Network. Uh, so it Download the Varsity Network app, search St. Mary's, and uh, you can find uh, our post-game show there coming up right after this. Final score, St. Mary's drops their second straight. They fall to New Mexico 69-65. to Our post-game show is coming up next, and this is Gales Basketball from Learfield.
Bay Alarm is proud to sponsor the St. Mary's Gales. How good is your defense? When it comes to protecting your home or business, Bay Alarm has been bringing the best for over 75 years. With security camera and fire 